Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to the December 21st edition of our 2011 Steam Holiday Sale Special uh, where we look at what's on sale every day on Steam and see what's worth buying. So let us begin here. First thing that's up, Swords and Soldiers is a super cute type of, I don't know what to call it, a sort of head-to-head -head creature spawning, unit spawning game. I mean, it, it sort of feels a little tower defensey, a little something else. Um, I've, I've played a lot of Flash games that are very similar to this on, on websites like Congregate and Armor Games and things. Uh, but this is a really good, uh, very cutesy implementation of that kind of genre. Uh, just watch the video, you'll, you'll sort of see what I mean. There is a Steve achievement, a Steam achievement for this game, so uh, for $249. Um, it's a fun game in general. It is multiplayer. You can play it single player, but it is multiplayer. The achievement is tied to the multiplayer game. Um, involves using a, a certain ability five times. Um, 249 very cheap, lots of fun. They may have a multi-pack. Check it out, send it to some friends, and have some fun together. Great, great little game. Jurassic Park, the game, I actually don't know much about. It does, it, it's one of those games, it looks pretty nice. Like, nice textures on the uh, the dinosaur. Unfortunately, it's only got a 56 Metascore, which is not a good sign, uh, especially since it's still at $15. You know, it seems like the sort of thing that probably had a pretty decent budget behind it, and it just didn't work out. It's one of those games where maybe, like, graphics not equal to aesthetics, um, which is, you know, like, you've got, ah, oh, awesome lighting and bump mapping and stuff like that, but if it doesn't actually feel right, then it's not really worth it, and maybe the gameplay is questionable. I don't know. I don't have it. I don't intend to pick it up either. Grotesque task Tactics is a sort of a parody of a lot of the role-playing games like, um, uh, I don't know if they list it, but like a lot of the D&D role-playing games, like maybe like Neverwinter Nights or something like that, or, or Baldur's Gate or Dragon Age, like it feels like that sort of thing, but I think it's, gonna, it's supposed to be somewhat of a parody. They're talking about uh, Monkey Island style humor, that sort of thing, um, which sounds really great actually, and I'm strongly considering picking this up for myself. Um, although I may investigate what reviews are like for this game, but I've seen it before and it's always kind of intrigued me, so there you go. What else do we got today? Um, Neverwinter Nights 2, speaking of which, excellent game. I mean, this whole series uh, was always good, starting from the Baldur's Gate RPGs on computer, which are very different from the Baldur's Gate games that came out for console. Very, very different. Um, but Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 were great. Neverwinter Nights 1 and 2 were also good. I don't remember them as fondly as Baldur's Gate. There could be a lot of different reasons for that, but they're certainly very good. They also come with really good content creation tools if you want to make your own um, dungeons and adventures and fully scriptable and everything. They're a little bit older now, so I suspect the graphics may come out a little bit dated, um, but that doesn't mean the gameplay is bad in any way whatsoever. Uh, I can't remember if Neverwinter Nights was based on 2nd edition or 3rd edition Dungeons & Dragons. Baldur's Gate was definitely 2nd. I feel like Neverwinter Nights was 3rd edition. Um, but don't hold me to that. I'm not, I'm not certain. More art! Yay! Batman! Arkham City. Arkham City, not Arkham Asylum, which means this is the latest game, which is why it's still fairly expensive. The base price is still $50, but it's on for half price, so $25 uh, for a game that's very highly re regarded. Uh, this, this art in particular, like, that is so goddamn creepy. Um, unlike Arkham Asylum, Arkham City is quite a bit more open, I believe, a little bit more of that sort of, uh, Grand Theft Auto-esque sandbox feel. Um, again, I haven't played it personally, so I can't really judge, but it was pretty well received. So it's nice that it's on sale. The Sherlock Holmes series of games, which are a series of like adventure and mystery games, are on sale for a very, very inexpensive price. Again, if you're at all a fan of this sort of genre, uh, you can pick up the whole set of six games for $8.75, um, which is really nice. I, you know, I don't think that individually they're necessarily that stupendous, but if you like adventure games, it's probably a good way to spend some time. Weird background noise is going on here. Um, what was I going to say? Actually, I'm going to see if uh, my wife is interested in these, and I may send them to her uh, because she, she does like adventure games. So, Although usually she plays the one with a female protagonist, which makes sense. I mean, it's not the sort of thing you tend to think of very often as a guy, but you sort of want someone you can relate to. So Anyway, that that's a whole other episode. Mount and Blade is a game that I keep meaning to let's play. You may not know about this game. It's fairly sort of indie endeavor. In fact, I believe the first Mount and Blade was like two people or something like that put this together, which when you see this, you're like, 
this is amazing. I mean, it's not a AAA title, but it's really good. And since then, they've come out with a couple of expansions. Mount and Blade Warband in particular is very good. Now, these are not expansions, I believe. I believe they're standalone games. I'm not sure about Fire and Sword, but Warband is definitely standalone. It's almost like you can think of it at like Mount and Blade version 1.5 or something like that. Uh, and it adds quite a bit to the game. So what kind of game is it? Well, it is... There's a world map you can go around. They don't show it because the screenshots are that. would kind of be kind of dull. Uh, kind of be kind of. Um, but it's you, you, you've got this open world with all these cities all over. You can go around basically anywhere. You can do a variety of things. It's very open-ended. You can sort of take on quests. You can um, recruit people, create this army, this band that you have, and then you know go and attack bandits or go and take out. There's like, you know... 10 different countries, so you can go and invade other countries, take over territory, and actually claim it. That's if you've gained enough reputation to be noticed by, uh, you know, the lords of the realms that you can swear fealty to someone, and then you can take territory over on their behalf, or you can sort of claim your own territory, and all, all kinds of things like that. But it's, it, th that part of the game is kind of interesting, but it's the battle system that's amazing. There is a small but dedicated community of people online who play this game multiplayer because the sword fighting is so damn good. Um, and you really have quite a bit of control over it, and there's a lot of expertise to develop in like sword fighting and using your shield and using the bow and arrow and mounted combat. You can get and you can get knocked down off your horse, and then it's on ground combat. You can storm castles, in which case, you know, you have to have the guys run up there with the ladders and put them up on the wall and then climb up the walls. Um, and then, you know, you're fighting from parapet to parapet and wall to wall and tower to tower to try to take these keeps. It's actually a really good game. It's not very expensive. Um, and it's, again, it's not a AAA title, but it's it's really quite good if you like role-playing games, if you like historical games, if you like strategy games, if you like the idea of, like, really kick-ass sword fighting. Um, the only thing that's ever come close to this, I find, are some of the old uh, Star Wars um, Jedi Knight games in terms of competitive sort of sword combat type game. Uh, and the... Um, the fire with fire and sword expansion did add some firearms and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I don't think it was as well received. No meta score on it is a little lower. I'm curious to see what the meta score is on Warband. I don't expect it to be super high. Although 78 for a game that was basically made by two people to come out with a 78 meta score, insanity. I, I guarantee if you if you at all like this genre. Um, and there is a, some strategy element. It's not like super fast-paced all the time, although the combat itself is. But there's some, you know, strategy bits outside of combat. Entirely worth checking out. I Yeah, really good. Lots of unit types as well. Lots of variation that way. Payday, the heist. I don't know anything about. There is an attached achievement, which is good. It's only $10. It has, you know, creepy clown face guys. Um, it's an action-filled first-person shooter that lets players take on the role of hardened career criminal, executing intense dynamic heists in pursuit, constant pursuit of the next big score. Load out with an array of weaponry and equipment, navigate six high-stake heists with three other live or AI co-op partners in, in crime. Um, I, I really like the sound of this, actually. I do also like co-op play. Um, there's a four-pack. If you've got friends and you, you're going to do this, I'm willing to bet it's a crap ton of fun. Uh, it sounds like it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, decent meta score. You know, it's another one of these. It's not going to be the greatest game of all time, but it sounds like it's a lot of fun. Maybe play through all the missions at least once. It sounds like you've got a lot of value there. And I kind of want to check it out, actually. Hmm. Next game. All right. I don't play racing games as a general rule. It's not really my thing. Um, but it astounds me all the time when I look at these games and I check out the videos how freaking photorealistic these games are. Uh, there are tons of times I'm looking at the screen and thinking, like, this is a video, right? This is a pre-rendered cutscene, right? Or this is actual video from an actual racetrack. And the physics that go into these and the ability to tweak every last thing is... It's just unbelievable. Anyway, if you're a racing fan, you're a racing fan, in which case getting uh, one of the premier releases out for 25 bucks for half price is always going to be a good deal. If you're not a racing fan, then whatever, right? Um, I do feel part of it is I don't have all the peripherals for it. Like, I don't, you know, especially you might need a steering wheel or something like that. And I don't have that. And steering these with keyboard really sucks. If you can get an Xbox controller, which I do, that's often a, a, a the way to go for a variety of these sorts of driving games because the analog sticks help uh, a great degree, um, as opposed to the the digital keyboard stuff, which doesn't usually work out. Okay, Stalker. This is 
If you don't know what Stalker is, it wouldn't surprise me. It wasn't necessarily the biggest name out there. You can get the bundle. The bundle of the base game and two expansions. And I actually don't know what Clear Sky is exactly. Oh, it's um, it's a prologue, like a prequel. Interesting. Anyway, very, very cheap. Um, so Stalker wasn't isn't on the radar of a lot of people, but it's very, very reminiscent to, like, let's say, like, a Fallout 3 or something like that, okay? Very, like, RPG-ish... Um, post-apocalyptic. Um, I mean, you're walking around the ruins of Chernobyl. In fact, I think that's what the base... Oops, I just moved the screen a little. Um, yeah, it's, it's called Stalker the Shadow of, of Chernobyl is the base name for the game. Now, there is a pretty significant caveat here. When it came out, and this is part of the reason it wasn't tremendously successful at the time, although an 82 meta score, I consider anything over $80 that you can get for under $20, or anything over an 80 meta score that you can get for under $20 is a huge win. You can get this for five bucks. Now, apparently the base game is really what's what's amazing. The expansions are like, meh, whatever. And it's not the sort of thing, it's not like um, it's not like Fallout 3 DLC where it just adds more stuff, I think. I think it is, it's it's sort of its own sort of setting in game. Um, but the caveat is it was a little bit buggy and what you want, let me see, um, uh, stalker community patch. There's a community patch that Fixes. Oh, Stalker Complete. That's what you want to Google. Stalker Complete, Stalker Complete Mod, Stalker Community Patch. All those things will bring up the right thing. It's the community, it's the complete mod for Stalker. Fixes some outstanding bugs. Also, uh, rebalances a few things. Adds some features in that were meant to be in the game, including completing some quests that sort of were never enabled in the game because maybe they weren't complete, complete at release. Uh, and so these sort of finish those off and re-enable them in the game and gives you a, a, apparently a, a much, much better encounter. So Stalker by itself is fine, but if you install the uh, the complete pack, it's that much better. And um, I, I don't know what's involved in doing it. I don't, I'm, I don't know. I actually own Stalker, but I have never played it yet. And I keep meaning to. It's super high up on my list. I actually, I bought it, I think, for the last, the last Steam sale. Um, so anyway, check it out. Um, I, I, it comes highly re recommended. That's all I can say, and it's cheap. So, next we have Defense Grid: The Awakening. I have this game. It is a tower defense game. It's pretty good. It's only two forty nine right now on sale. Very, very, very inexpensive. Uh, it does have an achievement for the uh, the winter sale going on. I mean, you're not you don't want to spend two forty nine just to get an extra ticket to the winter sale, but it, it all ties into an extra incentive. Um, it's a pretty decent tower defense game. Um, I think part of it for me is I'm spoiled. I really like desktop tower defense, or I think that's what it's called. Um, very, very good flash-based free tower defense that sort of almost spoiled me for all other tower defense games ever. Um, but this is a pretty high up, definitely top five. Very, very, very fun to play, so recommend it. And then Monday Night Combat. Okay, Monday Night Combat is like, is kind of like League of Legends meets Team Fortress 2. You have two teams, um, and, and the theme is amazing because it's like, it's got all these crazy announcers. You're basically like, you're in a game show, except you're two teams of people loaded down with guns trying to murder each other uh, while also trying to destroy the other person's base. You've got minions that spawn. You can kill the minions to get money that you buy, use to get upgrades for your character to sort of level up your character. Um, there are four or five different character classes. Um, there's like, I, I like the engineer class, which can heal people, also upgrade your turrets and upgrade your, your minions and hack into enemy turrets. There's the heavy, there's the, uh, the stealth guy who can go invisible. Um, excellent. What the hell is this chicken thing? I have no idea what the video of this is showing. Um, but it's actually a pretty good amount of fun. Um, and last time I went on, there's still an online community. You can hop into multi-player games pretty easily. There is a four pack, which you can get for $15. Um... Awesome. Yeah, see, some people are saying like TF2, but better. It's like TF2, but funnier. And that's hard to get. Team Fortress 2 is already hilarious. This is potentially more hilarious. And it's got that sort of base defense, tower defense, RTS mode that um, that things like League of Legends has. And I compare it to League of Legends because I, most of my audience is from... It, a lot of my audience is from League of Legends as opposed to Heroes of New Earth or Dota or anything like that. But it's it's comparable. Um, good. It's It's fun. Check it out. Check out the videos. And and that's it. That's the last of the daily deals. So I hope... Oh, and you know what we're going to do? We're going to take a look at the great pile for today. Uh, one, one 
gift you can get is just for joining the Steam 2011 holiday group, which you can do by clicking right here on this link, the Steam community, and then click join. Easy peasy, you get a free ticket. Uh, so, um, a defense grid achievement, gold medal on an adrenaline challenge, challenge mode. So it sounds like you have to do really good on a fairly hard map. So I don't know how easy or hard it is to get this achievement. Uh, Swords and Soldiers, all I want for Christmas is used to use the Aztec mind control spells five times in a single online match. Uh, so obviously, you know, you will have to play online, you will have to play against other people, you'll have to figure out what the Aztec Mind Control spell means, and you're going to have to figure out how you can use it five times in a single game. Um, I actually, Aztecs were my favorite people to play, so um, hopefully you'll like them too. Payday to Heist, find an Xmas present on any level. I guess they're just hiding somewhere on the level? I don't know. Um, Jurassic Park the game, uh, get Miles to offer Nima a bonus. I have no idea what that means. It's also the most expensive game on the list, and arguably the least well uh, reviewed, um, with Payday being sort of second in terms of price. And then Guardians of Graxia, which I, uh, I apparently own. I, I was gifted, it was gifted to me some time ago, and I'm ashamed to say that I've never, ever had the opportunity to play it, despite the fact that this game looks so much like my kind of game. Uh, it is on sale. It wasn't, it wasn't highlighted, um, but it's one of the ones that's actually on sale during the entire sale, 75% off. So it's 249 very, 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 very cheap to get. Um, there's also one that's, you know, an extra 40 cents to get you an extra map pack for it. It is some sort of card-based strategy game, and it has me so excited. I want to play this so much. It reminds me a little, uh, just at a glance, of like Coldcept, which is an amazing PlayStation game. Um, which combines sort of Magic the Gathering with Monopoly. It was, it was really cool. And anyway, it reminds me of that, and I really, really have to play this game, especially since there's an achievement attached to it. Anyway, that is it for my video. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you tomorrow.